Uh, thanks so much for joining us again, Elise. Um, mm -hmm. So now we want to talk um, a little bit about babies, so yeah. newborn babies, all those questions that we commonly ask our midwives, our health visitors. Including or, me as well. Or, uh, yes, <laughs> or Google. Yes. Um, so instead of going to Google, I thought it would be good to get an expert's opinion okay. on um, some of the questions. Try as much as I can. I know I had a lot of these questions yeah. um, and um, I know a lot of other women do mm -hmm. too. So the first question is, what is colic? Okay, um, colic um, is actually defined as excessive crying yeah. for more than three hours a day, for more than three days a week, yeah. for more than three weeks. Um, because they actually really don't know quite what colic is. Yeah. It could be the extreme variant of excessive crying, of, of normal crying. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not crying for no reason, is it? It's not... It, well, it is, <laughs> yes, and that's that's the difficulty. Ah. So it can it can be, you know, as part of the normal baby's development. Yeah. So if the if the baby is otherwise well and feeding well, yeah. and is just doing this crying, usually in the late afternoon to evening, yeah. it starts from about two to four weeks old and unfortunately continues until about four months. Yeah. Um, and the baby is well, this would be classified as colic. They used to think, and some people still think, it's maybe to do with an immature gut. So mm. a lot of, you know, whether it's to do with wind, yeah. um, problems well, like that. The problem with digesting that amount of liquid is always what I thought it was. It's not, it's, it can be, yeah, but then that could be other problems like reflux and yeah. stuff, or, or, or excessive wind or yeah. an, an intolerance. But um, that's why the definition is just excessive crying yeah. um, when in an otherwise well baby. However, if you have got a baby who is excessively crying, mm. I mean, it can be very distressing and you'll want to know what's wrong with it. Yeah. So I would always say, go to your GP and have a chat yeah. because what they will do is see if there are other symptoms. Mm. So of course, if, there, if your baby is unwell in any way, if there's a high pitched scream that's unusual to your baby and mm. it's continuous, mm. if your baby has a fever, a rash, diarrhea, vomiting, yeah. um, if your baby's taking less feeds, that's often the first sign your baby will give you if it's unwell, it'll just stop feeding. Yeah. Um, that, you know, you know, going on from that, less wet nappies, um, getting dehydrated, the little hole in the skull, yeah. they're called the fontanelle, it's yeah. a bit sunken, that also shows dehydration. Yeah. So these are signs that your baby's unwell. Yeah. And I would definitely be taking um, he, he or her to, to you know, hospital yeah. or your GP. Yeah. But if your baby's really otherwise well, feeding reasonably well, um, colic can be quite difficult, you know, to, to manage. Um, other, other, you know, things it could be are cow's milk protein intolerance yeah. or a temporary lactose intolerance or reflux mm. um, or the fact that the baby's not feeding properly and latching on. Mm. So it might be good having, um, you know, getting a you know breast consultant yeah lactation so, consultant yeah. Yeah. so you can just check Although that you're doing that clinics aren't there that, that you can there go are. to and they'll help there you there are with yeah they can help you with that if when all of these other things are probably ruled out and i can come on to the other things if you'd like me to um then and you you know you do think your baby's got colic there are certain things you can try mm. because listening to a screaming baby every evening Oof. for four months it, you know no one's going to do that so things like feeding maybe feeding on demand, so not waiting until that baby's mm. hungry, mm. you know, picking up cues of your baby. Mm. Is, is your baby tired? Mm. Put them to sleep before they start the you yeah. know, excessive crying. Um, winding them, because wind may be, play a part afterwards. So, you Definitely. know, if you're breastfeeding, making sure they finish the whole breast mm. before moving on to the, to the next breast. Uh, making sure that the bottle's tilted up, maybe getting anti-colic mm. nipples for the so bottles. So they're not drinking too much air. Yes, yeah. keeping the baby upright when you're feeding. Yeah. Afterwards, burping, maybe taking, mm. you know, two, every two or three minutes burping the baby mm. uh, and keeping them upright. I found that so frustrating because Ava, I mean, I thought she had colic, but... No, I don't think. I'm not sure she did. <laughs> uh, I thought she had colic. Um, last certainly lasted for a good it's four months. Very difficult to know. But it was after feeding. Yeah. You didn't wind her for about twenty minutes. Yep. 
she would just cry and cry and cry. Yeah. So it probably was colic, but the bit, but you 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 worked out that it was related to wind as well. Yeah. Um, but I'm just saying for people out there, it's not always related yeah. to wind, yeah. and it can just be excessive crying. Well, yeah. It often goes know. hand in hand. Yeah. Um, so again, if you think it's related to wind, you can get certain drops with cometicone in it. Yeah. Um, anti-colic drops. Give them certain bottles. Over we the Dr. Brown's bottles because mm-hmm. they were supposed yeah. to be very good for them. Um, yeah, I remember Nuke as well in the UK. They were quite good yeah. for, for wind. And you could try that again, soothing the baby. So trying to take it back to when it was in the womb, mm. you know, close body contact, mm. warm baths, mm. white noise, yeah. calming. Because if you're stressed, which you're bound to be with your yeah. baby screaming its head off, but if you're stressed, your baby can pick up on that. So yeah. trying to, to make it as, as a relaxing situation as you can. Yeah. And also, you know, a routine, a baby, mm. no matter what routine you're on, likes to know what's happening next mm. and that will reduce the anxiety and, mm. and stress. So trying to do things like that. Yeah. There are so many other things like osteopathy and yeah. changing what you eat for breast it's fed trying, babies, it's but it's so difficult. Out, and it? usually by the time well. someone's tried everything out, the baby's, you know, finished its colic because yeah. it's four months up. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I mean, other things it could be, you know, could be reflux, like you said. Yeah. It's really difficult sometimes to determine, but reflux might be uh, quite the obvious reflux where, you know, they're vomiting. Yeah. A little posit here and there, yeah. normal. Yeah. But quite significant amounts of vomiting up to two hours after the feed, screaming when being laid flat because mm. the acid's regurging yeah. up, it's very sore. Just an irritable baby, quite turgid babies, mm. you know, they often not very soft they're quite hard and mm. you know constantly trying to hold themselves up and um, good head strength yeah. things like that look quite little serious looking babies as oh, well yeah. they've often got reflux and um, so keeping them again upright maybe you know with the Moses basket or whatever bed you've got lifting the actual head That's of the bed with a couple of books yeah so they're at an incline yeah. so all night they're not that lying flat helped. that definitely helps yeah because yeah. you've still got to keep them on their backs mm. Um, for safety at night yeah. when in, in the sleeping position yeah. but with the right props you could you can sometimes slightly on the side as long as they're not going to roll on the, their front yeah um because obviously that that would not be good at all um so things like that would but again with reflux it would be often crying after or during the feed mm. and so again feeding them upright uh, perhaps trying and them on an anti. difficult to feed them upright, especially yeah. when they're little because they can't hold their heads up. No, but, but, you, but you can do like a rugby, I yeah. think it's called the rugby ball hole, where you yeah, hold them there and the body goes down that. Yeah. yeah. And so there's one as well them. when they're older, you can actually sort of sit them upright. Yeah. So but again, the breastfeeding clinics or the lactation consultants They can help you. Help you. And there'll be clinics all stuff. around. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, just make sure you know, it's not even a latching on problem. But there are, um, medi- uh, if you do think this, go and have a chat with your GP. They can start you on an anti mm. antacid for the babies yeah. that you can either mix with boiled water or breast, express breast milk or put in the bottle. Yeah. You can thicken the feeds. Sometimes there are formulas that are made for reflux and it's, they're thicker feeds. Oh, so it's, it, it helps it go down a little bit better. Okay. Um, but sometimes it's a bit of trial and error with mm. all of these things. The other things it could be um, are... So people sort of, sort of say allergies, intolerances. Mm. There are two types. There's one that's a cow's milk allergy. Yeah. And that's an allergy to the protein casein or whey yeah. uh, or both. Yeah. Um, and that's completely different from a lactose intolerance, which is an enzyme that breaks down the sugar in milk, the lactose. Yeah. Very rarely people are born with that. Mm. Um, and it's usually after you get a tummy infection like bar and gas, and then you end up not being able to produce as much or the baby not can't produce as much of this enzyme so can't break it the milk down yeah. so it just comes through and it's yeah. often in diarrhea but it can be constipation mm. and we would suggest changing to a lactose free formula mm. just for four weeks while the enzyme grows back mm. and then you can gradually reintroduce that mm. but the cow's milk protein and um, that would be an allergy and, and again there's immediate allergy where you might notice that your baby has a red face or a flush mm. or an eczema immediately, yeah. diarrhea or vomiting. Worse still, anaphylaxis, again, quite rare. But they're also. Anaphylaxis? anaphylaxis is where they have an immediate reaction. 
uh, the immune system immediately reacts your and you've got risked your windpipe the swelling of Is the it lips like a fit? Um, not quite like a fit it's it's, di it's a different mechanism but it's basically all of um, the, the windpipe um, and soft tissues are expanding so right. therefore can block off yeah Breathing. you might yeah. get urticaria which is a big rash all over the body okay if that happened you'd call 999 mm. you, you know it's a short amount of time yeah you've got to get that baby to the hospital but i mean that's very rare yeah um there's usually it's usually something what we call a de delayed reaction um which is when you might get a bit of diarrhea a bit of constipation again yeah. you know bit of crying yeah this can also Normal be linked baby yes <laughs> linked to reflux as well so it, it's quite difficult but what your doctor might try is a you can have a blood test to see if you, you are allergic to this milk protein yeah. if that's not clear cut you can still try um to, you know hydrolyze milk from the gp which can be prescribed which is basically like a broken down mm. um protein yeah that your baby will and if they improve on that then you've probably got your diagnosis yeah other reasons the baby could be crying and not feeding properly latching on like we said but yeah. again it would be best to speak to a lactation consultant yeah. or breastfeeding clinic yeah. to make sure that that's going the way you'd like <laughs> <laughs> okay brilliant so um i mean what can I do if my baby does have reflux? It is it is go to the GP, isn't it? It is. I would go if if your baby is crying excessively straight or they're not they've been fed. straight. Yeah. So for with reflux, it's often after they've been fed. You can have something called silent reflux, which isn't clear cut because they're not vomiting. Yeah. But yeah, every time you lay them flat, they're crying. Then they're, they're a fussy feeder. They're, yeah. they're having difficulty. You can see that they're not finding it comfortable to feed. Therefore, they're feeding sort of little, but often snacking and snacking exactly, which. You know, might, might even make them put on weight yeah. because they're feeding little and often, um, which isn't a classic symptom of reflux because usually that's not gaining weight yeah. because they're not eating. But that's why it's good to go and have a chat with your GP because mm. they can ask about all of these things. And I guess if you're going to your GP and you think, oh, maybe my baby has refluxes, you know, take a record of when you feed them, when they cry. Mm. And what do they vomit and when? Mm. Um, obviously, if they're vomiting things like blood, green yeah. bile then that's serious your yeah. baby's not well yeah um, okay. um what should i do if my baby isn't putting on enough weight okay this is obviously really common yes it's very common because we've got it built into us you know that the baby must gain weight yeah. how's how's the baby growing and it's natural it's obviously to birth, isn't worry. It? it's like the first question yes. how much did the baby weigh it's like the first thing people exactly. ask exactly why does that yes. matter? Yes, okay. and the first thing anyone says, oh, the baby's grown. And, oh, well, that's you know, a small baby. Yes, oh, yes. a big baby. Chubby cheeks. Yeah. So I guess it's built into us to be almost to the point of obsessed with whether our baby's putting enough, yeah. on enough weight. I think, I mean, it's it's good to know that after your baby's born, uh, your baby will lose a bit of weight. Yeah. But by the just first or second it. week, they should have regained their birth weight. Yeah. By about four to six months, they should have doubled their birth weight. Yeah. And by a year, tripled their birth weight if you think that your baby is losing weight or not gaining as much weight as you thought yeah you'll have your little red book you'll have your health visitor mm. you can go and get your baby weighed at or you can do it in places like i used to do it in mother care yes because yeah you can do it wherever you you, you want to as long as your scales are sent some people i know have even the home scales yeah. i don't want people to get too obsessed yeah. by it because as long as your baby's feeding well, seems happy and is moving gradually yeah. along or up the centiles, yeah. that we're happy with that. Yeah. When we worry where there may be a problem, it would be maybe when the baby had dropped the centiles. So the line that you're moving up, you might be on the smallest line, mm. but as long as you're not dropping, yeah. then we don't worry too much. Yeah. If your baby's dropping, usually it's simple reasons like we've just discussed so it's mm. things like your babies aren't getting uh, go, not getting enough calories yeah. why is that is it because they're not latching on properly to yeah. begin with yeah. is it because you're feeding them and they're falling asleep so they're not yeah. actually feeding for long yeah. enough periods um is it because you're not emptying one breast and you're moving quickly onto the next breast so they're not getting the creamy thick calorific exactly milk. and then they might even get sort of the sort of passing wind and Diarrhea from that. Too as well, yes, don't they, they often get greeny. Having, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if they're not getting enough calories, that's going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it might be it might just be that you're not aware you know people don't know we don't mm. come with a manual no. and that's why these questions are so important yeah. so it's just about educating the parent how long to feed what to expect mm. and that's where the sort of health visitor can and don't come in don't panic either no 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 I've not got so at many all friends who really really panicked yeah. about the ba their baby's feeding and it it really affected them breastfeeding and how they felt about breastfeeding and yeah. they criticised themselves and they felt... But it is understandable enough. because some people don't produce enough milk course, and then they've yeah. got to top up and, yep. you know, so you're advised lots of different things. Our mums will tell us one thing, the health visitor yep. will say something new, yep. online forum will say something else. Yeah. But the general, if you don't think your baby's getting enough and it's not moving up that centile, yep. I would go along and just have a chat with mm. the doctor. They'll just take a history room because the key thing is getting a diagnosis. Yeah. And you can't do that until you've taken a, a, a really good history about yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Um, other causes, if the calories are going in, maybe they're coming up again. The vomiting, mm. yeah. the diarrhea, they're not being absorbed properly yeah. because of an intolerance yeah. and they're coming out again. Yeah. So again, that would all be in the history. Again, if it's going in, it's staying in, maybe and this is more rarely, your baby has a metabol um, um, metabolic dis disorder. So yeah. thyroid, the hypothyroid, the yeah. burning off too many calories. Yeah. You're, you, it's got an underlying chronic illness, like congenital heart That's disease, so where rare, you're using, yeah, where, where you're using exo calories. But this is going down the ladder of what, mm. it's usually the feeding problems yeah. Yeah. at the beginning. And yeah. that's where, you know, you can do something to change it. Yes. Um, and... And, and monitor your baby but these are very, very rare conditions yeah. and that's why when your baby's not gaining weight it's important to go and see your doctor yeah and they will refer you to a specialist if, if they feel that certain feeding techniques or other things that you've changed and they're still not gaining weight yeah then they'll, they'll, they'll go and have, let you have a chat to a pediatrician so my baby has acne is it normal and what can i do about it well, uh, forty percent of babies have this baby acne, oh, and baby acne, yes, covered. You get this beautiful face. baby, <laughs> and then they come out more and more and more, and it can get really oh, bad all over the pussing. face. I mean, she had yeah. white heads. It was yep. yeah, it's oh. not pleasant, and of course, you want to take all I the baby photos. photos. I photoshopped them out. I was like, oh, I'm not oh. surprised because, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, it's to do with the maternal hormones yeah. um, and, you know, the same as teenage acne, it's all hormonal. So does that mean that, that non-breastfed babies don't get baby no, acne? No, because it often can pass through before. Oh, so, I see. It's in yeah, their system. Yeah, from... so it's in their system. Okay. So, um, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it, no. as I'm sure you realise. I mean, simple things, I mean, certainly things, do them. not squeeze it, <laughs> no matter how so tempting. tempting. <laughs> no. Uh, because you're to spread infection yeah. um, and don't scrub it, even mild exfoliation. No. Don't use any adult no. acne creams or anything. No. I would be washing it with just plain water, mm. patting dry, mm. gentle, mm. and unfortunately that's all you can do. Yeah. Uh, it does go. It will go. It does and go. It takes a while. Longer situation is about four to six months. How long did yours take? Um, so I think hers was about six <laughs> weeks. Six weeks, okay. But it definitely sort of started off with one. I was like, oh, it's a little milk spot. And then it was like the next day, I was like, look. <laughs> Oh, okay. And you know when people yeah. go, oh, oh, she's lovely. <laughs> and there's nothing spots. you can do with it. There's no hat you can put on. No. So, um, but some people say putting breast milk on it can help. Oh, yeah. They say Not that about sure breast if... milk for everything, don't they? I know, they? in the eye for conjunctivitis. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it works. Yeah. Um, it it's can't try. harm trying yeah. as long as you're, you know, not infecting the spots. Yeah. But unfortunately, I think it's just about time. Yeah. And eventually you'll have that baby. Yeah, but it's very normal. Yes, it's very, very normal. normal. Okay. Um, how can I help my baby's eczema? Lots of babies get eczema, don't yes. they? Yes, yes. Lots of babies get eczema. You're more likely if you're what we call part of an atopic family, so yeah. someone with hay fever, asthma. Um, if your parents have eczema. Yes, so if, if you've it. got it, yeah. you're probably 50% chance of going to pass it on to your, your child. Yeah. Um, the good thing about it is that you may grow out of it, um, certainly by teenagers, if mm. not before, if it's mm. quite mild. Mm. Um, initially, it doesn't have to be, like we know eczema is typically being on the flexors, but when it's a baby, it usually starts off in the cheeks, behind the ears, and, and, and young infants, even on the external surfaces. Mm. So it doesn't always have to be typically within the elbow creases yeah. at all. Again, it's about trying to avoid 
triggers, mm. so things that you're allergic to, um, or not allergic, but house mites, you know, making sure you hoover well. Yeah. Um, if they like soft toys, just having two mm. and making sure you're washing it over 60 degrees yeah. each week uh, or putting it in the, the freezer to, to kill the dust does mites. That work? It does, yes. But you've got to keep it there for two days, right. two, two, three days. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd wash it 60 degrees, a bit, bit <laughs> yeah. quicker. But, um, so, um, but the main thing, I mean, heat and dryness are mm. the worst things because you basically you've got to stop the itch scratch cycle. Yeah. And heat and, and dryness make it itch. Well. So, to stop it's that. Like scratch and they bleed, don't exactly, they? Exactly. And they're, and they're pulling their ears and they're bleeding yeah. and then it can get infected. So, um, you know, heat, make sure their rooms are cool. When they, mm. when they have a bath, don't have it a really hot bath because mm. that. Don't put them under a hot nylon, you know, or non-breathable the materials. Is an interesting one because um, Ava didn't have eczema, but she did get quite dry skin. Yeah. And they said don't bath her every okay. day. Bath yeah. her every other day. Yeah. I think as parents, we think we have to bath them every day at six yeah. o'clock. No, but, but their natural oils are there as long as you're cleaning. Obviously, the nap yeah. nappy area. Yeah. Then, you know. Yeah. They're not. They're they're. they're they're hanging around the house. They're not doing. They're not really getting dirty. Yeah, are not they? Coal mines, no, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, but it, so removing the heat, and that would be um, materials as well. So no nylon, no wool, really cotton. Mm. Um, if you get clothes from the shop, wash them first yeah. because they've got a lot of starch in them to make them look pretty. So you buy them. Um, then the moisturisers. So if a skin yeah, is dry, sure. it's going to itch. Yeah. So no perfume. You can get some prescribed from your doctor. It's like a dipper base that's, for babies, isn't it, that they offer? Yes, you can have that. Not aqueous cream, that used to be told, but that's that's uh, it's got things in it that may um, irritate your baby's skin. Yeah. But basically stuff without perfume in it. I found um, coconut oil really Exactly, good. so natural oils. Yeah. Um, again, putting them in the bath, you could just put a bit of these moisturising creams in the bath, yeah. and when they come out, that's when your body's most absorbent to, mm. to moisturisers, so then you pat them dry, moisturise them yeah. then. Yeah. Um, other things, just removing irritants within, you know, your in your house and in your environment. Mm. Um, hot to cold, so in the winter it's worse. You've got your heating on. You go out to a freezing cold. It's going to trigger off a bit of eczema. Yeah. Stress as well, but that's for when we're older. Yeah. I don't think babies get that stress. <laughs> um, but it, it's generally just remember it's something you can't cure. Mm. And I think that's the main thing. Mm. It's you know people, oh, I just want to get rid of it, mm. and and then and they have because they've used all the emollients. And then it comes back because they haven't maintained that, you know, they cannot produce that amount of oil. So you have to keep maintaining it with all the emollients. Yeah. If there's still dry patches, then a mild steroid cream. Mm. You know, steroids aren't all a big no-no. Mm. Yes, they have People side effects. Of them, aren't they? they can babies. be. Yes, but a mild steroid used for short periods of time will bring that inflammation down. Yeah, there are you know other more, you know, serious treatments, but as a general rule, most babies will respond to that. Yeah, and yeah, will they grow out of it? Is that yes, a like, so like I said, most of them will grow out by teenage years, teenage um, years. if not before school. Okay. It depends how um, severe it is. Okay. What is cradle cap and what can I do about it? Cradle cap, okay. Yes, it's another unfortunate thing like baby acne that yeah. you, no one wishes on their baby. Um, and it's characterised by sort of big greasy plaques on the head. Um, and it's thought to be because of a sort of overactive sebaceous gland or sebum and the yeast living within it. Um, so what do we do to get rid of it? There's not that much you can do, but washing with a daily baby shampoo mm -hmm. regularly, patting dry and being able to comb the greasy scabs mm. off, not picking off mm. though, because you don't want to cause infection. Yeah. Um, putting oil on the baby's head. Coconut oil is really good I was about to say, yeah. not Olive oil isn't great. Mm. I would use a coconut oil or an almond oil, yep. something like, or even a vegetable oil, mm. um, or a, a, a simple baby oil, something without a fragrance, keeping it on overnight, washing it with the baby shampoo in the morning and combing the, mm. the, the flakes and if out. if they don't have any hair, mm -hmm. do you still comb the scalp? If, if they've got flakes, this is just to get rid of the flakes. Yeah. Because you've got, to, would you be using something with a soft brush okay. to gradually get it off? You don't have to. This is just an easier way of 
taking out the, the scabs, okay, as it were. Okay. Um, but you can get a, an antifungal cream also prescribed by your doctor, mm. which you can apply, especially if they've got no hair, that's much easier. Yeah. And that can often help uh, clear up the yeast and mm. therefore the extra sebum that's caused, or the extra oil. So if it, if it's causes the scabs. Quite a lot to do with yeast. When the babies are being weaned, should you try and make sure that you give them a, a low yeast diet or does that make no difference? I've not known that that's made any difference okay. because it's about a yeast living in the oil glands mm. and that's still a theory. So I would be just using a topical gentle cream on, yeah. that, on, on the scalp but again it will gradually go away yeah. after about sort of four, four to six months. Four to six months. And if it doesn't go away, just continue doing what you're doing? Continue doing what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, as long as you're not making it infected and making it worse and picking it, yeah. um, then it's just a matter of time, I'm afraid. Um, you can get, I mean, a, an adult form of cradle cap is, a, you know, sebaceous dermatitis where you get scaly around the noses oh, yeah. and, in, and scaly in the yeah. eyebrows. Yeah. So that's the adult form and it would still be similar. Yeah, and treatments. that's often treated with steroids. Uh, usually an antifungal cream unless the information is quite severe and then you can add in a steroid. Again, you can add in a steroid to the cradle cap if mm. it's severe, if the information is bad. Yeah. Okay, well thank you so much for that. Um, if you do have any questions for Elise about your baby, um, then do drop us an email and she will get back to you. Thanks very much for watching.